Hello, friends. Welcome back to English Classes Online. My name is Benjamin. Today's video is on how to write an informal letter, West African Senior School Certificate Examination, English Questions and Answers. Of course, our focus will be on a past question taken from the white English exam on informal letter writing, and then we give an example. We give a specific answer to show how to correctly write an informal letter as required in this exam. If you are new to this channel, kindly subscribe to the channel by clicking on the subscribe button below. Click on the bell icon as well, so that whenever a new video is uploaded on the channel, you will be notified instantly. Without much ado, let's dive into the lesson. West African Senior School Certificate Examination, June 2020, English Language Theory Question, Section A. We are picking question one, which is a question on informal letter. Your brother who is in, in third year in another school has written to confide in you that he is about to stop schooling and go into business. Write a letter to him advising him against his decision. That is the letter we are going to write. First of all, you need to understand the type of letter you want to write. Usually when you are giving your WIAC English question paper, you will find that there are about five questions in section A. Some of the questions are questions on letter writing, some on article writing, some on speech writing, story writing, and so on and so forth. Then you know that questions on letter writing can be of different types, either informal letter or formal letter or semi-formal letter. These are the three main types of letter. But here, the letter you are asked to write is an informal letter. How do we know? Because an informal letter is a letter you write to someone with whom you share a personal relationship. And when you look at this question, your brother who is in third year in another school has written to confide in you that he is about to stop schooling and go into business write a letter to him advising him against his decision. So you are writing a letter to your brother and your brother is someone with whom you share a personal relationship. This is how you ascertain the type of letter you have been asked to write, all right? So another thing that will help you to understand when you are required to write an informal letter is that a formal letter is called a personal letter. You know, it's a personal letter. A letter you write to your brother is personal, all right? You share a personal relationship with him, so you are writing to him a personal letter. It is also called a private letter or a friendly letter, which means if you are asked to write a letter to your friend, that letter is a friendly letter, and a friendly letter is an informal letter. All right. Now let's look at the features of an informal letter. Features are parts of something and a form, an informal letter is made up of various parts. Now the first part is um, the first part of an informal letter is the writer's address and date, all right? That's the first one. Now, the second one is the salutation. And the examples are, dear father, 
dear mother, dear John, dear sister, dear brother, and so on and so forth. All right? Now, the third part of an informal letter is the content of the letter. And the content of the letter is made up of, first and foremost, the introduction. Then you talk of the body and then the conclusion. All right? These are the parts. Then the fourth part of the letter is the subscription of which the examples is yours sincerely, because you have some other examples such as yours affectionately, yours ever, yours truly, and so on and so forth. Then the fifth part is what comes after the subscription, which is your first name, followed by a full stop. So these are the various parts of an informal letter. All right, so now let's move on. Now, in writing an informal letter, you begin your letter with the writer's address and date. And of course, you can see uh, here, okay? You can see here, this is your address, of course, 20 Balogun Street. Ikeja, Lagos State. This, of course, is the address, all right? Take note of the punctuations. You can see there is a comma after the street number here, and there is a comma after Balogun Street. Then after Ikeja as a major location, we have a, com a comma, and then after Lagos State, which the, is the, the final part of the address, we have a full stop. Because you know that if you are writing a letter to your brother who is living abroad, then you have to include the country name. But since your brother is in another school within your country, then you can end your address with the state. So after Lagos State, you have a full stop. Now take note that the date comes after the address. And here we have 23rd August, there's a comma after August, 2021. That brings the, the address to the end and you put a full stop. Then the salutation is dear brother. Then you have the salutation, which is dear brother. And then what follows will be the content, which is paragraph one, the introduction, paragraph two, three, and four will constitute the body of the letter. And then the paragraph five possibly will be the, the conclusion, all right? Well, so this gives you a picture of what the content of your letter should be. Now, there was something we must take note of is also the subscription, which is yours sincerely, followed by a comma, and then followed by your first name, yours sincerely, comma, James, full stop, all right? So that is the way it should be. Now, before you write, you pre-write. Now, this is what we call the writing process. It might interest you to note that you know the writing process can be actually uh, understood to you know constitute three major parts, which is pre-writing, writing, and rewriting. So here we are looking at the writing process. And the first thing in the writing process is brainstorm. You brainstorm to generate ideas for your letter, and then you create an outline. That actually is the process, all right? Now, an outline is a list of the main points you are going to discuss in your letter. That obviously is what it is. And when we, 
take a look at the letter we have been asked to write. All right. Your brother who is in the third year in another school has written to confide in you that he is about to stop schooling and go into business. Write a letter to him advising him against his decision. So what brainstorming is all about is for you to think about those pieces of advice you want to give to your brother. What are your reasons? You know, why are you advising him against his decision? Why are you telling him not to stop schooling? All right, those reasons are the things you, you have to jot down. Now, let's look at what we can jot down here. All right, now the first thing you can tell your brother is, you know, the need to complete your secondary education. Of course, you are telling him that much as it is advisable for him to go into business, it is, it is wrong for him to stop schooling halfway. You know, you want to tell him that he needs to complete his secondary education and obtain his O-level certificate or his senior school certificate that he will need this in future, all right? Now, you might also want to tell him, you know, that his parents' response will likely, will likely worsen their health condition. In other words, you are telling him that his decision to stop schooling will, like, will likely cause your parents uh, a heart attack, all right? Or increase their uh, blood pressure, which is already high, you know, at their age. Then the third uh, reason is likely to be the importance of academic qualification. For example, your brother might want to become a president or a governor or a senator. Simply put, he might want to run for a political office after becoming a successful businessman. And you want to remind him that at that point in his future career, he will need, um, you know, the minimum qualification of a senior certificate, a senior school certificate. So it's advisable for him to complete his schooling so that he won't regret in future, all right? Now, having said this, let's now take a look at a letter. This is a sample, you know, we want to look at how we can write this type of letter if we, uh, we are in the WIAC exam, the WIAC English exam. How do we write this type of letter? All right, this is what we are going to look at right now, okay? So now you can see that this is the letter, all right? And so we are starting with the address here, all right? 20 Balogun Street, Ikeja, Lagos State, full stop. Of course, you can see that this is on the same level. It is just a typo, right? But uh, you need to understand that we have an option. We may decide to use the block style. This is the block style, but because it's a, an informal letter, you can as well use the slanting style. Let me show you how you can use the slanting style. All right. If you decide to use the slanting style, you may decide to write it like this. Okay. Let's assume that this is exactly Okay, so in this case, then Ikeja, all right, so this is the way 
you can use the slanting style. You can see here, of course, that this is, you know, it is slanting. Well, we could as well shift, make it more slanting, all right, if we like. Okay, so we can do that. Okay. 20. Balogun Street. Okay. Well, let me make it very slanting. Ikeja. Full stop, uh, I mean comma, Lego states. So here you can see what we mean by the slanting style. You can see that this slants to the right, all right? It's, it slants, okay? It's, it slants. But one thing I want you to note here is that when you are writing, this is just the slanting style. The date will be on the same line. The date is not going to slant with the address. When you talk of 23rd August, you can see that it's going to be here. 23rd August and all that. You are not going to, uh, let it slant to the right. The date will retain the same position. So in other words, if we are to use the slanting style again, let me really explain it quite well to you so that you won't be confused if you decide to use the slanting style. Okay. So you can see this. And then the date should be here. Full stop. So you can see exactly this is how to use the slanting style. You can see the slanting, you know, it, the slanting stops with Lagos State. Then 23rd August, you know, aligns with the first, all right? So that's exactly the way it is done for you to get the slanting style quite, quite well, all right? Now, if you decide to use the if you decide to use the, the block style, of course the block style will be 20 Balogun Street. Ikeja, Lagos State, full stop. Then, 23rd August 2021, full stop. So this is the block style. You can see this is the block style and this is the slanting style or the indented style. So whichever whatever one you choose is actually acceptable for an informal letter. All you need to do is to ensure that you uh, punctuate your address and your date correctly. Now, having said that, we are true with the address and the date. The next thing will be the salutation. The salutation. So take note of the salutation, dear brother. This is the salutation here. Then this is followed by the first part of the content, which is the, which is the introduction. Now I'm talking about the introduction. 
you can see that when we begin to write, we indent our paragraphs. To indent means to leave a space. But don't forget that when we write the salutation, we don't need to leave a space. Some people will want to write a salutation and they leave a space. Of course, you see some people will come here. They leave a space here and they begin to write their brother. All right, so this is absolutely wrong. This is wrong because you don't need to leave any space. You know, their brother has to begin at the margin, all right? You don't leave a space. You only leave a space when you begin a new paragraph. You can see the space here in the case, a paragraph. And this space here is determined by the computer, you know, the computer, because this is typewritten by the computer and the, the space is determined by the margin. If you are writing by hand, you can place your indentation, you know, between there and brother, if you are writing by hand to ensure that, you know, you get it right, all right? Okay, so having said that, we are through with the salutation. Now, the first paragraph, we can see the first paragraph here. All right, the first paragraph here. We begin, how are you? Now, one thing you need to understand is that there are certain features of there are certain features of an informal letter. Uh, features of informal language. Let me put it that way. Features of informal language. All right. Now, number one, contractions, or let me use the word short forms. Short forms, all right? Then you can have um, idioms slash slang expressions, all right? Then, of, of course, you can have jokes, you can have, but I will show you, you know, the kind of short forms that are acceptable and the kinds, the kinds that are not acceptable, all right? Okay, so let's see uh, how we begin our letter here. How are you? It's been ages. So it's been ages. This is a short form. Instead of saying it has been ages, we can say it's been ages since I wrote to you. That is acceptable. All right? I have been so busy with school work and domestic chores these days. You see, you can you know, you can begin to write in any way that you choose. The important thing is for you to understand that when you are writing an informal letter, you are writing to someone with whom you are familiar. And because you share a personal relationship with this fellow, then you write to them just in the way you would talk to them in real life, all right? So that is informal language. Now, don't forget that in, in the question, you are already told that your brother has written to you to confide in you, and then you are asked to write to him. 
Of course, you can invent any kind of scenario that will reflect the kind of relationship you share with your brother. Now, it is important for you to do this at this point to show that you know exactly what an informal letter is all about. Before the examiner asks you to write to your brother, he expects you to reflect that relationship you share with your brother when you write to him. So let's continue here. Thank you for filling that communication gap with your letter. So in this case, you are saying that you have been unable to write a letter to your brother because you have been so busy with your schoolwork and with your domestic chores, all right? Then eventually your brother wrote a letter to you. Now that you are thanking him for filling that communication gap by writing a letter to you, you are fulfilling exactly the condition given by the examiner, which states that your brother has written to you, your brother who is in another school has written to you to confide in you that he is intending to stop school uh, in order to go into business. So now let's continue this, our sample letter. That was very thoughtful of you. You are, you are happy that your brother wrote to you when you were unable to write to him. Now you begin to look into his letter and tell him your mind about his decision to stop schooling and go into business. And we can do it in this way. Now you have, we are, you have received his letter, you have read his letter. Well, you are saying that the letter he wrote to you was a very good thing that was very thoughtful of him. Then you, write, you say, however, when you want to introduce a contrary uh, view, you use this word, however, so you write, however, I was worried when I read about your decision to stop schooling and go into business. All right? You are beginning to address the content. Don't forget that in judging your essay or letter, there are some parameters that white examiners use in assessing your letter. One is content. The second one is organization. The third one is expression. And the fourth one is mechanical accuracy, all right? These are four uh, criteria for judging your essay. So the first one is content. Content has to do with how well you have actually addressed the, the subject matter. You know, you have treated the subject matter. The subject matter here is your brother's decision to stop schooling and go into business. And the examiner says you should write to your brother advising him against this decision. So you will score well under content if you treat this matter, this subject matter very well. Organization has to do with how you are able to, you know, organize the various parts of the letter. You have your address well written, well punctuated. Then you have your salutation, then you have the content of the letter organized into paragraphs that takes care of organization. Expression has to do with how well, you know, you are able to, uh, how well you are able to use the appropriate language, all right? You use informal language, yet you do not, uh, you do not derail entirely from acceptable English expressions, all right? So that is about expression. How well you express your ideas, how clearly you express your ideas, all right? 
All right, so that is exactly the way it is. Now let's continue. Now, I was worried when I read about your decision to stop schooling and go into business. Your desire to go into business is commendable, but I think the timing is completely wrong. You see, you are now discussing, you are saying that his decision to go into business is, is good. Only he should take a look at the timing, you know, the, when he is to go into that business is not in his third year uh, at, the, at secondary school. He has to wait until he completes his secondary, at least his secondary education, then he can go into business. Then you continue here. I would like to discuss some reasons why I strongly believe it is better for you to complete your secondary education before going into business. So you, this is exactly the way to write. Now, there are, of course, there are some basic uh, ingredients. There are some basic ingredients that you need to have in your first paragraph. The first one is the subject matter. The second one is the thesis. The third one is what we call enumeration. And the fourth one is what we call the intro. Well, uh, it, 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 there is no law that says that these three essential uh, elements must be complete in the first paragraph. But the most important ones are the first and the second. The subject matter I earlier told you has to do with the content, what the examiner has asked you to talk about. So you must reflect it, all right? Because this is an informal letter, of course, if you decide to begin with exchange of pleasantries or making inquiries about the welfare or well-being of the person you are writing to, then this will be included uh, as part of your subject matter because it is already implied. When you are writing a letter to someone with whom you share a personal relationship, you know, it is, it is assumed, it is presumed, you know, that you begin by, you know, uh, exchanging some pleasantries, just as you would naturally do. If you meet someone, you can say, hello, how are you? How was your day? How have you, whether you call, on, call him on the phone or you meet him in person, you know, there are certain basic requirements in your conversation. So these are part of the subject matter. All right, then the thesis is your central argument. And you can see here that you have brought in your thesis as probably the last sentence here. I strongly believe it's better for you to complete your secondary education before going into business. This is your thesis. This is your viewpoint. This is exactly your central argument. This is what you want to tell your brother do not stop schooling now. Complete your education first before you go into business, all right? Then enumeration can come if you decide within that first paragraph to list the points you want to discuss. Of course, that is more advisable if you are writing a formal letter and then you, you, you can come with a list of those points you have outlined, you have put down in your outline, all right? Then the intro is just something to show that you have completed your discussion in your introducing what the letter is about and you are now going to discuss these points one by one. Well, we may decide to do away with this, this third and fourth ingredients and then we have been able to incorporate the subject matter and the thesis in our first paragraph, all right? Now, having done that, we now go to the body of our letter. 
Don't forget that our letter, the content of our letter is made up of three main parts. The first is the introduction. All right. Then the second is the body. And the third, all right, the third is the conclusion. All right, so now we are true with the first one, which is the introduction. Of course, you can see our introduction. This is our introductory paragraph, which we are true with, all right? So we are true with the introductory paragraph. And then we are beginning with our, the body of our letter. In the body of our letter, we are going to begin to discuss the three points we have already outlined. Remember when we did our pre-writing, uh, our pre-writing step, I showed you how we came up with the points. First, the first point is the need for your brother to complete his education. Then the second one is the need for him to consider the reaction, what will be the response of your, of your parents, all right? How it is going to affect them. Then the third one is for him to consider, you know, that he may need this basic senior school certificate examination, he may need it as a qualification to vie for a political office in future. So these are the three points. And you are going to discuss these three points one by one in the body of your letters. So let's see how this is done in this sample letter. To start with, you are already in third year. And this means that you have less than two years to complete your secondary education and obtain the senior school certificates. You see, this is your topic sentence. You are saying that, you know, this is his third year and he has only two years to complete his secondary education, less than two years to complete his secondary education and obtain his school certificate. Now, let's continue. The point I am trying to make here is that if you stop schooling at this point, you will forfeit the senior school certificate. Now look at it, this is your argument, all right? You, this also, this corresponds with your earlier statement in, in the introductory paragraph that what is wrong with his decision is the timing. He has, he has less than two years to complete his secondary education. And if he stops halfway, he won't obtain his senior school certificate examination. I mean certificate, all right? Then you continue. Consequently, the three years you've already spent at secondary school will be a complete, a complete waste of time and resources. So you can see this exactly is your argument. You have given him one of the major reasons why he should, you know, uh, he should reconsider his decision. Then going to the next paragraph, we say, all right, of course, this is our second uh, paragraph in the body of the letter. This is paragraph two, this is going to be paragraph three. And then we write, Moreover, it's obvious that daddy and mommy won't be happy to hear that all the resources they've invested in your secondary education will go down the drains just like that, all right? You and I know full well the kind of heart attack your decision is going to cause both of them, especially mommy who is already down with high blood pressure. So. Your argument is quite clear, it's brief, and yet it is clear, it is it's, it's precise, it is powerful, all right? So that's the way to write. You have outlined your points when you come to the body of your letter, having given the introduction in the first paragraph, 
then you begin to discuss these points one by one. This is how to write a good informal letter. Okay, so let's now go to the next page and look at the continuation of this letter. We're now going to uh, the third paragraph in the body of our letter, which of course is the fourth paragraph in our entire letter. Don't forget that the first paragraph of our letter was devoted to introducing uh, this letter. And then in, the, in paragraph two, we began the body of the letter, which began with point one, and then we have seen point two. Now we are going to point three, or what we call the third reason, reason number three, why your brother should change his mind. So this, of course, is that. Finally, you will realize that you need the senior school certificates if you decide to go into politics in future. Now, you are already taking him into the future uh, that he may likely want to uh, run for a political office, probably after becoming a successful businessman in future, like most people, he may likely want to become a president or a governor or a senator or you know one thing or the other. Okay, so you must have read in the news how some of the politicians are being disqualified from running for certain political positions in our country because they lack the required academic qualification to vie for such offices. You are now explaining this to your brother. You want him to see reason to see eye to eye with you on your advice, all right? It's possible that after becoming successful in business, you may decide to vie for the office of president, governor, or senator. At that juncture, you will realize how wrong your decision to stop school halfway is. This is because the minimum academic qualification for being elected uh, into such offices in our country is the senior school certificate. All right, this is a typo, so elected into, all right? All right, so that is your point. And so you have been able to give him three reasons why he should, you know, reconsider his decision to stop schooling. Then we are now going to summarize. We are going to conclude. This is our concluding paragraph. And so this is the way you can put it. There are many other ways in which you can actually put your ideas, but I'm just giving you a example of how you can do it, all right? Uh, writing is a creative exercise. And when you start to write, the ideas will keep flowing into your mind. Your ability to actually uh, invent new ways of doing something is what is going to win you maximum marks in your essay writing. So here, there are many other reasons why, of course, you can see that this is our concluding paragraph, all right? This is our concluding paragraph. There are many other reasons why I believe you must reconsider your decision to stop, stop schooling at this point. However, I believe that the above three reasons are sufficient to convince you that you shouldn't take a step further in that direction. I know that you've always reposed much confidence in me and you know full well that I love you and we never advise you wrongly. Please reconsider your decision in your best interest. See, you have, you have driven home your argument. You have actually developed your, your, your points to a logical conclusion. And that is really what is required of you in writing a letter 
or any piece of writing in these exams. Then you can end your letter on an informal note, all right? I hope to hear from you about rescinding your decision in view of the above reasons. Make sure you send me your positive reply as soon as possible, all right? So you have made a call to action. You don't want to just end up advising him. You want to show him how important it is that he changes his mind and he, you want to, uh, you want to have the evidence that he has done so uh, by receiving his reply, all right? So having done that, then you come in with your closing or your subscription, which is yours sincerely, you put a comma here, Kane, full stop, all right? So this is how to write an informal letter. We have been able to examine you know, how to write an informal letter. We picked a question from 2020 June, uh, WASC English uh, essay questions. We were able to give answer to question number one, West African Senior School Certificate Examination of June 2020. We picked question one. You can refer to the past, that past question and you will see that uh, when you look at section A, then question number one is what we have actually uh, treated here. And I hope you have learned a lot of lessons that will help you to improve your letter writing skills. Uh, with what you have learned in this episode, I am convinced that if you properly imbibe or inculcate this, uh, I mean, imbibe this or cultivate these uh, skills, of course, they will help you to write a good letter, a high scoring letter, a letter that will enable you to score maximum marks in that exam. And so if you enjoyed today's video, like the video and share the video with your friends and relations. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel by clicking on the subscribe button below. Remember to click on the bell icon as well, so that whenever a new video goes live on this channel, you will receive instant notification. If you have any questions, any, uh, any comments or any suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. Uh, endeavor to take some time to go through the description section uh, the entire channel is full of, of videos, you know, uh, handling different topics, you know, in the West African Senior School Certificate exa in Examination, specifically English language questions. You will also find literature in English questions and answers on this channel and different English learning topics that will help you to improve your uh, your use of English and also to be able to score high in your English exams. On this channel, we also create videos on content creation, on digital marketing, and on online business. We share ideas that will help you to, in, to create multiple streams of income by starting an online business. So, this channel is a rich channel that gives valuable content. And of course, uh, you will always find value for your time when you come to this channel. I want to say a very big thank you to all of you out there who were part of today's episode. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye for now and remain blessed. Many thanks for watching today's video. A big thank you to all of you out there for being part of today's episode. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, kindly subscribe to this channel. Subscribe now as a way of giving us support. For notification about new videos, click on the bell icon. You will find the bell icon. Click
click on it so that whenever a new video is uploaded you will be instantly notified if you have actually enjoyed the video like and share the video with your friends and relatives this is very important if you have any comments leave your comments below any questions any suggestions we would gladly receive them and respond promptly and positively to them see you in the next video i look forward to always see you in the new video thank you and